Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. I'd like to um, make a short video today on some um, books on, that I have. Um, this is a, uh, I made a series of videos a few years ago on um, suggested um, physics tech book recommendations. I sort of did it on the fly and I need to redo those. And, um, but I'd like to add, I think I've done nine of them, I'd like to add a tenth one, this video, just describing some recent purchases that I've made. And, um, you know, I don't have, um, you know, I'll just show you the books and why I bought them. And most of them I bought for specific MOOC courses or something. The books are in the, uh, depicted in the upper right over here. So let me start with the first book. Um, Mastering Quantum Mechanics. Um, this is a big solid book. I'll just show it to you here. Um, Barton Zyberg taught a bunch of quantum mechanics MOOCs, three of them, 8.04, 8.05, and 8.06, and they've been extremely successful and he basically took the notes for the course and he just wrote them all up and um, we corrected them. I worked with him a little bit and editing it and doing some additional problems and, and um, also um, correcting any errors. But the books are just, to me, they're now, they would be the uh, gold standard for an undergraduate quantum mechanics book. The book itself is a thousand pages long and um, I won't go into too much, any detail on it. I, I'll just say on Amazon, um, there's a, one review right now, and I wrote it, and it's a long review, so you can read what I wrote on Amazon, where I list like some of the high points and the specific topics. I even took pictures to show how the book like just opens flat, and it's really good for like when you're studying an, an advanced physics book. But um, this is a great book. Um, it's probably, to me, this is, would be the, the best quantum mechanics undergraduate book out there right now. And it's even better because, like I said, even though the uh, courses, the three courses, are not available right now, they will be available in the near future on the new MIT website. They used to run on edX, but edX was sold and some of the courses remained on edX for other topics, but for this topic and a few others, it's, they're going to be on the new MITx course. So that's the um, Mastering Quantum Mechanics. And um, I highly recommend it. And I mean, the great thing about the book, as I point out in my view, is the exercises and the problems. They're really top notch. You learn a lot. They're guided problems, so you can, they're not one sentence problems like in some graduate level textbooks. They're like whole pages and everything. So um, check out this book. Um, I, I, it might seem a little expensive, I understand, but um, it's well worth it and it's very solid construction. Okay, the next book that I got it was this one. Um, Oxford Solid State Basics. I got this book um, because I decided there was a, a course online, not a course, but a set of videos, and it's a course at Oxford. And um, here it is. It's on YouTube, and it's also and the and on. You can also easily get access to the professor's website and see, get problems and solutions and, and various things like that. But all of the, um, all of the, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm trying to show you um, all of the videos. Oh, here they are. They're all, so, so all of the videos, there's about 21 of them. So they're all available on YouTube and online. And the, the videos in the book mostly parallel each other. It's a relatively uh, easy course. It's the type of course where if you know a little quantum mechanics, you should have a quantum mechanics course before you take this, but you don't have to have it. It's not like quantum field theory or anything. So this can be taken sort of like concurrently. It's sort of like a advanced sophomore 
beginning junior level course. Anyway, I, uh, I recommend it. I watched all the lectures and they were fairly good and it was less painful. Like I said, condensed matter physics and solid state physics, they're not my, um, they're not my passion. So some of the books that I read on this are just a little bit too detailed and everything. This really gave you the basics. So I feel, uh, I felt good going through this course. Then, um, the next book that I've recently purchased, um, Modern Atomic Physics. Um, a few years ago, I took a um, an atomics physics course. It was on edX. There was like uh, two of them, and it was atomic and optical physics one and two. And um, I guess the, this is the MIT OCW site and the video lectures. I don't know if they're available anymore, to tell you the truth. Let me see if they're available. I... Let's see if this works. Nope. Let's see if somehow they took down the videos or something. But um, you might look on YouTube. I have a feeling they're on there. And it was a fairly good course. It wasn't the greatest course. It had a lot of miscellaneous stuff on atomic physics, and I... I felt like I was kind of just trying to earn green check marks and didn't have a coherent understanding. And that's why I bought this book, because this book, I think, covers not all of the material the same way, but it covers a lot of the material in atomic physics. And um, you can sort of see from the, um, the topics that, you know, it covers the, pre the preliminaries and you have coherent states and all the things with atoms and the Stark effect, but goes into more detail, like with dressed atoms and um, resonance and various things like that, things like um, saturation intensities. Um, coherence, it has a good chapter on. Then, you know, a lot of the detail that especially experimentalists, but theorists should know too on line shapes and spectroscopy. So, um, I think this is a well-written book, and all the problems in the book have solutions. As a matter of fact, there aren't really any problems in the book. He just gives a problem, and then he solves it. So for this material, I kind of like it. Um, so um, I'll have to look for those videos uh, again. The next book is... Um, a book on supersymmetric quantum mechanics. There aren't too many good ones on these, and I'm not even sure. I've only read about a third of this book, and the main thing is that I'm able to understand it, and it's not that difficult, so that's why I like it so far. Um, this is the version I have. There's a new edition of this book. Um, if you go out, I took a course. Jim Freewicks of, of Georgetown University teaches a course and he uses like what's called the factorization method, but it's really similar, to, and it's just, other people call it the supersymmetric method. It's basically algebraic solutions, just like you solve the harmonic oscillator, but now you um, apply it to um, all kinds of potentials and everything. So um, I'm sort of enjoying this book, and the course that it was based on was much more involved and the calculations were like really involved. Um, this is, it's still available on edX. I think it's running in a few months. You can sign up on it. I guess I could even um, play you this video and see what happens there. Hi, I'm Jim Freericks. I'm a professor of physics from Georgetown University. This is and like to copyright violation here. Course that's going to be offered on edX. The original developers of quantum mechanics... So I'm going to stop it here because I don't want to engage in, in a uh, copyright violation. But um, anyway, you can find this course if you search for courses on edX. And um, it's a different approach to quantum mechanics. Um, I still think you need a, a standard quantum mechanics course either before this or concurrently with this. But this covers like different ways of doing things like um, algebraically and without solving any differential equations. But um, it it's, uses a lot of combinatorics and manipulations and everything. 
So you might want to check out that course. Um, the next book I have is um, An Introduction to Cosmology, Undergraduate by Barbara Ryden. This is um, highly rated by most people. Most people seem to like it. I actually, um, to be honest, I'm not enjoying it that much. I, I have some other books on cosmology at the graduate level by Weinberg and some various other things. There's just a lot of formulas in this book, and they keep going from one thing to another, and they don't go into great detail on some things. And I guess for an undergraduate, this is a good book because it's not that difficult. But... Um, and and there are, this seems to be the choice. It's short. It's only 250 pages. And um, you, have to, you just have to look at it and see if it's your, if it's your cup of tea. Um, it's fairly comprehensive. It treats like the dark matter and the Bayron's problems and inflation and, and um, structure formation and everything. At, but it's all at the undergraduate level. Anyway, I took this course because I decided to take a course on, on MIT OCW by Alan Guth that was taught in fall 2013. I um, and he rec and one of the recommended books for the course was this. It wasn't highly recommended, but and there are some others. But there's a lot of video lectures, and again, I, I'm trying to figure out if these are still. I know these are still available. At least I watched them, but. We'll see what happens here. Okay. Well, I don't know. MIT is uh, OCW has come up with a new site. I'm sure these videos are still available, but I'm just not sure um, why they're not playing in this browser. They might play in a Chrome browser. Let me just quickly see if, if I can get this to play in a Chrome browser. I think it's just a question of... Um, I think it's just a question of it haven't been, nope, won't play on Chrome either. So maybe they've taken them down. Anyway, I'm sure you could find it on YouTube. I took this only about six or eight months ago. So I think it's the updating of the YouTube site, a lot of the MIT OCW sites, a lot of the videos from old courses haven't gone through. And, um, but, um, it's a well-liked um, undergraduate textbook on cosmology. The final book I have, Learning Scientific Programming with by Hill. I have a lot of books on Python, and you, there's zillions. There's a million different ways to learn Python. I, I already know Python, but I need to review things for like NumPy and Matplotlib and, and various other things. And I think this is the best book that I found out there because it approaches everything from a science perspective. The um, the questions and the problems are like, um, it goes into detail on the core Python language and covers you know all the basics, but the great thing about this is all the exercises, that they're not like you go into a supermarket and you have a grocery list type of problems. They're all math and science problems. They're interesting in other words. And you learn some, you learn some science while you're also going through this book. So um, the course, oops, okay, here's what I wanted. I recently started a course on computational physics, and I found this course offered at Rutgers. This is the home page right here, and. Um, He's got a lot of videos and everything, and, and the first part of the course I went through, I actually was able to install all kinds of stuff on, um, let me click this introductory le lecture material, um, install all kinds of stuff on um, setting up a computing environment and not just the Python with the Anaconda, but also getting your C++ compiler, which I have a Mac, so I already had one, but I got it up to date and everything. And I was able to um, run, um, he gives detailed installation steps, and I was able to like speed up my Python programs by running e them either in some kind of Fortran or C++ code that emulates them. And there's a lot of different ways 
that you can speed up Python code. The, the, some is much easier than others. But um, it all worked. I couldn't believe it. You know, everything worked. Usually these things never work. But I actually speeded up by like a factor of 20, one of my um, Python codes. I, I You can use number as one thing, or you can recode some things in F2Y or PY bind 11 and everything. I had no idea what these were, but I went through these lectures, and so he's very good. And um, he's got a total of about, let's see, he's got 26 lectures up on YouTube. So these are definitely available. Actually, they were Zoom lectures. If you stop screen sharing, there's a record so, button on like the So there's the kids in the class and everything. And he really went through everything. This is uh, on Mac. Is basically, this is the uh, professor down here, I think. But anyway, he gave you details on how to um, set up your computer and how do you, uh, you know, here's the professor. This is the professor over, over here. And um, I don't know if this mouse is showing up, actually. It should show up if I have it here, though. No, it's not. Okay, but it's the second from the top. The, um, so he's a very good professor, and I'm going to try and finish this um, whole course. i got a long way to go, but I got through the first couple of parts, and uh, everything worked. So um, that's it for this video, and as I, um, as I purchase books, when I purchase five or six new ones, I'll, uh, I'll make another video, and I hope to redo the first nine videos in the course, because I did them um, before I had a lot of this uh, new software that I use. So um, I'll see you next time. I uploaded a quantum field theory uh, video yesterday, and I plan on um, finishing this lesson with about five, uh, lesson 3.5 on my quantum field theory course. Um, I hope to finish it in about, I don't know, maybe uh, two weeks. Of course, I never meet what I say, so, you know. I took a hiatus for six months on my videos, and uh, people kept asking me, where am I? And I just said, I'm on sabbatical, but I'm not a professor or anything. I'm just taking my lickings in the uh, U.S. stock market. So um, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.